Let's drop this down just a hair. Okay, sweet. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, welcome to a live stream um, on Wednesday. So this is the first time that I think I've done a live stream on a Wednesday. Uh, and yeah, it's, uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I've uh, done a live stream. So, uh, we will see how this, uh, how this goes. So, um, I apologize to the, the people who are not able to join, uh, today for the live stream. Um, I know there's some people with schedules that they're not able to, uh, you know, join in only on, um, Sundays, but because usually if you are new to the channel, usually I do live streams on, uh, Sundays, uh, Sunday evenings, uh, specifically. And, um, this is the first time I'm doing one on a Wednesday. So, um, yeah, welcome to everybody who is, uh, who's joining today. Um, I'm glad that you guys are able to make it, uh, let me know in the comments or the live chat, if it sounds okay on your end, uh, cause I can never, uh, tell if these things are sounding okay to people. So, um, yeah, I, um, I'm excited. I have a whole stack of movies here to talk about. Uh, since I have not done one of these live streams in a, uh, a long time, it feels like at least two weeks. Uh, I have a bunch of things that, um, just a bunch of things that like, I don't know, that I've watched that I've have not been able to talk about in the past live streams. Uh, so I will probably start this thing off like I normally do. Um, and yeah, then we will just uh, talk about movies, talk about, you know, what people are watching and questions that people may have. Uh, and I'm hoping that this coming Sunday, I will go back to my regular schedule of Sunday night live streams. Um, this last few weeks have been crazy busy. And so uh, it always seems like there's something going on on Sundays. So um, yeah, yeah. Um, trying to think if there's anything else to talk about before I jump into this. Um, so if you are new to this channel, um, I should say, I apologize if you're not new and this is like you're, you know, you've seen all these live streams. I'm going to say this anyways. If you are new to the channel, uh, one of my goals this year is to watch 365 movies, not necessarily one every single day, but uh, at least just that many throughout the entire year. And so I'm currently up to movie number 127. So I feel like I'm ahead of schedule. Uh, I have no idea how many days we've, we're into the year of 2024, but um, yeah, where I'm at 127 movies, which is really fun. So I keep everything tracked in this notebook. Um, and yeah, I've just been uh, just watching a lot. And um, yeah, I guess I will just dive right into this. Uh, since the last live stream, uh, I, you guys may have noticed I got an, a acquired a huge Laserdisc uh, collection. Um, it was like th over a little over three hundred laser disc, laser discs, um, and it pretty much almost doubled my whole Laserdisc collection. Uh, so I've been kind of diving into a few of those here and there. Um, not as many as I'd like to be, but. Um, yeah, I, I have the first few that I have here are Laserdisc. Um, so the first thing that I watched, this comes from the year of 1924. So this is 100 years old by now. Um, let's see. Uh, what's one movie you own any format? Okay. What's one movie uh, you own any format that that's worth a lot? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, hmm. I would say like uh, I have a few laser discs that are uh, worth like a decent amount, especially the horror laser discs. Um, some of the horror VHS I have uh, are, I guess, harder to come by. Like I have the Sleepaway Camp films on uh, VHS and Chopping Mall. Yes, um, Chopping Mall and VHS, um, and I feel like this one goes for about eighty dollars or so. Uh, so it's like, you know, for a VHS tape, I feel like it's a decent amount. Um, obviously, with Criterion, I have a, a, a decent amount of those. Um, some of the box sets I have are worth uh, a little bit. Um, but I don't know. I, I'd say each format I have, there's like at least something in there that is worth like a decent amount. But uh, the first thing I watched, which this was back on, let's see. 
the 26th of last month. So uh, what month are we in? April? Um, yeah, March 26th. Uh, I watched the film Siegfried. Um, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, this is a uh, Fritz Lang film. Uh, this is a two-part uh it's like technically it's like a two-part series this is the first part and there's then another part um but this movie is a hundred years old uh 19 uh, 1924 is when this came out um and honestly i was just actually telling my wife about this where i feel like a movie like this feels so much more like real than a like a film that you might see today uh this movie just feels like um it's hard to describe it feels like a uh like really like it could happen it feels like it happened in life and like this was them recording it and it's just one of those like i mean it's a beautifully done film um it's an epic so there's a kind of like an adventure aspect to it um and some of the i mean it's all practical effects i mean it's um but it, it just a a remarkable film for what they're able to achieve back a hundred years ago um and it makes me feel like you know when we have like you know they had a fraction of the technology that we have now and yet they're able still to tell a compelling story and so um yeah i feel like it's, it's like it's an encouraging thing as a filmmaker to to watch something so old and be like they were able to make this back in the day and um you know they're able to to do it and make it still interesting and so um you know not having the right tools uh for film or you know not having the most fancy equipment for a film uh, I feel like it's not a good excuse to not go out and tell a compelling story because uh, something like this is uh, just proof of that, of that they were able to, uh, you know, just use their imagination and make something really special. So um, I know this is available on Blu-ray. I do not currently have the Blu-ray. This is my only copy I have on Laserdisc. So um, I'll eventually sometime grab that. But uh let's see uh what happened to vhs collection video that you uploaded a few days ago uh what happened to vhs collection video up uh i'm not sure what happened i'm not sure what you're talking about um i don't think did i i am not sure i'll have to double check but i mean everything should as far as i know everything's still up on my channel um, I didn't take anything down, so um, I apologize if something is messed up on my channel. I'll have to go and double check. But um, let's see, Ralph says, "Good evening, everyone." Uh, Monday, I watched Dune Part Two in the cinema. Seen it? Uh, I did actually watch it, and I'll get to it in one second. Uh, I, yeah, I've seen it on, or I saw it on the twenty ninth of last month. So I'll uh, I'll get there shortly. Um, but kind of going along with the early uh, movies that like from the, you know, a hundred years old or older. Um, this is, I watched this on the 27th. Um, this is just landmarks of early film. Uh, so this has, it's like, um, there's a ton of films on here. Um, and let's see. Yeah. Some of the movies in here are like, you know, train arriving at a station, uh, the, um, What's that one? The people leaving the factory film. Uh, there's like something with a garden. I guess I could just read the index. Um, the barber shop. I'm trying to pick out ones. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, like a trip to the moon, a great train robbery, um, and just all kinds of other stuff like that. Uh, all, I mean, the earliest piece, the early, earliest film on here is from... Um, 1877 which is wild um but it's just it was really cool to uh just kind of sit down and watch some like really really early early uh cinema i've seen some of these films before i i have uh, a trip to the moon on blu-ray um but i've actually never seen a great train robbery uh it's one film which is this one um, it's one movie that I've just never gotten around to, uh, watching mainly cause I've just never owned a copy. Uh, surprisingly, I've just never come across a copy, uh, within this, uh, this collection. And so, um, I'm glad that I have this, which is just like, you know, some stuff from like over a hundred years ago. And again, it just kind of proves the whole, um, that you can make something super special and, uh, it's still like, 
I don't know. You, you don't have to have the, the most fancy equipment or the fanciest, you know, camera or like whatever. And you can still tell a really good story. So um, a lot of fun watching this. Uh, and then let's see. Also on the 27th of last month. Uh, let's see. I'm waiting the... I'm waiting the bus to go see Scorsese's The Aviator in the 20th anniversary release. Awesome. Um, I'm assuming you're waiting on the bus to go see... Uh, yeah, so The Aviator. It's been a long time since I've seen The Aviator. Uh, I've seen it one time, and I remember really liking it uh, when I watched it. But, um, yeah, I feel like it would be... That'd be cool to see in theaters. I feel like it's just a... I feel like it's a kind of an underrated Scorsese film. Um, I really liked it when I watched it. I think the coloring, I remember the coloring being really interesting, but um, next up, I watched the film uh, Strangers on a Train, uh, which honestly it's Alfred Hitchcock and he's just, just absolutely perfect. I mean, I feel like his, his style of storytelling, I mean, it really just, I mean, he uses every single second of film. Um, I mean, this is a, let's see. How long is this? See, I think there was two different versions of this film, um, if I'm not mistaken. There's the final release and the preview version. Um, I watched the longer of the two. Let's see, one's 103 minutes and one is 100 and... Okay, so they're both 103 minutes. Uh, I think one just is slightly longer, like slightly... like. It explained it in the in some one of these things, but uh, basically, it's just it's like a perfect film in my opinion. It has so much great tension, and it just uh, I don't know. I feel like you feel every single like second in a good way, not in a bad way. Where um, I feel like it's a a movie that um, I don't know. I feel like it's a I don't, I don't know how to describe it. Um, I've lost my train of thought, which, no pun intended. Um, I feel like it's a, uh, it's just a great movie. Um, if you like Hitchcock, I would highly recommend checking it out. Um, and I don't know, I just, I feel like all of his films just, they, uh, they have this feeling to them um, where, I mean, he takes up every single second of film and it's a, uh, um, I don't know, it, it's... He basically, I mean, he rolls everything up to like the last possible second. There we go. Something along those lines. Um, And so next up, I watched uh, Argento's Dracula. Uh, This is directed by Dario Argento. um, And I can say that this movie is not very good. Uh, It's unfortunately, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty bad. It's pretty cheesy. Um, I feel like Dario Argento um, as a director uh, probably should not have tackled like this, like gothic horror um, subject matter because I just feel like it just it's not his style. Um, and yeah, I wasn't a, I was not a big fan of this film. Um, I'm glad I watched it once, but I um, yeah, I will um, maybe. I mean, I'll probably never watch it again. But um, let's see, the Aviator was nice. Nice, did not love it. Um, Kyle and everyone, did you guys see or slash have Decalogue? Uh, so I have, where is it? Yes, I have, uh, the Criterion release. I'm assuming this is the Decalogue. I don't know if there's multiple versions of this movie. Um, but I have not watched this yet. Uh, this is a 583 minute uh, Polish film. It might be a series. It might have been a series. Um, but yeah, uh, 583 minutes. And so it is not a short, uh, short thing by any means. Um, but I'm very curious. I would love to sit down and actually watch this. Um, so, I mean, I've, I honestly have no idea what this is even about, uh, but I, I'm, I've heard good things. Um, from people who have watched it, so, but, uh, let's see, speaking of Criterion, I jumped into the box set of, um, The Adventures of Antoine Duenel, um, I think that's how you pronounce this as well, 
uh, and with the movie uh, Stolen Kiss, Stolen Kisses, sorry. Um, and this is the same director as the 400 Blows, which I've seen before. And there's also a short film on this. Um, and I would highly recommend checking out the short film. Um, but it, this, it, this whole series of films uh, kind of follows the same character and kind of like his life. Um, and it reminded me a lot of the Before trilogy. Uh, this kind of became, honestly, one of my like favorite box sets within the Criterion Collection. Uh, not necessarily my favorite box set, but uh, one of them. Uh, it's pretty high up there at this point. Uh, Stolen Kisses was just fantastic. Um, big fan. I thought it was just so well done. Um, and yeah, I just... I don't know. I feel like the character feels very like real. It feels like a real person. Um, and yeah, I, I, uh, um, I really enjoyed this, um, this, uh, this set. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Decalogue is a masterpiece. Uh, I love Turf. I think that's how you say his name. I don't know. Um, the director of this, um, that's a great set. Yes, I um I'm kind of I wish that I got this sooner. Like I wish I yep, I wish that I watched this sooner in life because I feel like it is a um I don't know, it's it's it I feel like this is like an underrated Criterion box set that has some fantastic films and I actually I finished this box set within this I guess list of films that I've watched um and so I'll talk about those I guess as they come up but um yeah, I highly recommend checking all these films out. I feel like they're just so well done. Um, but then next up, let's see. Yeah, next up, I sat down and I knew this was going to be one that um, was going to be a kind of a challenge to watch, uh, mainly because of its length. Because um, I believe this is close to four hours long. Uh, if not, it might be. Yeah, it's, it's about four hours long, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I watched the film The Ten Commandments. Uh, so I have this like really nice gift set of the film. Um, honestly, a a beautiful film uh, shot in Technicolor um, and a Panavision too. Like it's just it's so well done. And uh, even though it is four hours long, I feel like it that goes by very quickly. Um, and it just some of the sets on this honestly were just very impressive. Like you can just uh you see like characters interacting and then like you know there's characters interacting in the background even like way far far in the background uh the amount of extras of this film must have been insane uh and so it was just very impressive um some of the like the composite shots of you know characters interacting with stuff happening in the background that like wasn't necessarily there you can kind of tell uh it's a little dated but overall like I would say this film is just fantastic. It's very well done. Um, and I mean, just from a technical stand, this is like, from a technical side, this is just a uh, very impressive uh, film that I feel like, you know, I don't know. I feel like, you know, people talk about, I, I look at it kind of like Ben-Hur. Uh, it reminded me a lot of like the, the story of Ben-Hur. Um, and so, I mean, just from the time period when they were made and stuff, but I kind of miss these like huge, like epics that were made that were, you know, four hours long with like intro music and they had a, um, what's it called? Like an intermission and the outro music and, you know, the whole thing. And it was just, um, I don't know. I, it just felt very, um, it felt very big. Um, and it's just, it's an interesting, uh, interesting film. Um, but um, I also watched Pink Floyd, The Wall movie, uh, very experimental vibes with that one. So I've actually, I've owned uh, The Wall for like years and I've yet to come, like I've yet to actually watch it, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, and I, I do want to watch it as a thing. Um, I'm not like a huge, like diehard, like Pink Floyd fan, like some people are, but like, um I don't know. I, I've owned it for years. I'll just maybe someday I'll get around to, uh, to watching it, but, uh, let's see. Ooh, the 10 commandments uh, is one of the best 4k transfers I've ever seen. Uh, not the best movie in my opinion, but yeah, an incredible achievement for sure. Yeah. Like I, um, um, I see why it's in like lists of like top a thousand films and stuff. I mean, the, 
I just like from a like production standpoint, it just seemed to be such a like massive undertaking. Um, and yeah, I, 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 I enjoyed it. Um, but I would love to see the 4k. I feel like that would look really good. Um, as well, but uh, I recently watched the Heartbreak Kid 1974 online. I heard that, or I heard the DVD is pretty hard to find. Do you own it? 1972. Okay. Um, Heartbreak Kid. Heartbreak Kid. I don't think I do own it. I don't think I do. Let's see. Um, I don't know. I'll have to look uh, after this, but um, yeah, I feel like I do not own it. That does not ring a bell, but um, I'll have to check it out. Um, and then finally, on the 29th of last month, I watched Dune Part 2. Uh, me and my wife went out to a theater um, and uh, sat down and watched the whole movie. Um and overall, I liked it, um, but I didn't necessarily love it. Like some people are like, you know, absolutely in love with it, and that's that's totally okay. I I get it. Um, but personally, I just I thought it was good. Um, there was nothing like particularly like wrong with it that I didn't like necessarily. I think it was just like the thought of like the like rewatchability for me wasn't quite there. Um, and maybe it has something to do with that. Like, I've seen Dune Part 1 one time in theaters. I never, like, went back and rewatched that. Uh, so maybe if I watched both films, like, back-to-back, -back, maybe that would, like, change my perspective of, of it. Um, but it's also not necessarily, like, a story that I gravitate toward. Um, like, I've owned the, like, first three books for years. I've just never, you know, really thought to read them. Uh, and I think like, um, I mean, I've seen the David Lynch Dune, uh, the Yodorowsky Dune, um, that never got made. I would, I mean, there's a documentary that I'd love to watch on it, but, um, overall I just, it's not necessarily my type of story. Uh, I can appreciate it and, um, I understand why people like it, but, uh, I, I just feel like for me, it was just, um, I liked it, didn't love it. I don't see myself going out day one purchasing it on 4K, um, you know, to watch again and again. But, you know, eventually I'll own it. Um, so that's kind of my thoughts briefly, I guess, of Dune Part 2. But, um, you know, if you liked it, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I mean, um, but then on the 30th of last month, I continued my... Um, my Antoine Duenel box set with a uh, bed and board. Um, and I feel like, so this series, it was like, it kind of takes place in like three different sections, at least the, like, well, there's four movies technically. The first one's of him, like as a young uh, kid, and there's this short film, which kind of takes place as him, like, you know, teenager, early adulthood kind of, um, and then Stolen Kisses kind of takes place when he's like in his like you know, 20s. Uh, Bed and Board takes place, I'd say, when he was like in his like mid to late 30s. Uh, and then the last movie that I'll get around to kind of like, I would say, takes place like in his 40s, roughly. And that's me just guessing of his age. But um, it's kind of, it's, it's just like interesting. It follows him as a character and the people that he's interacted with. I don't want to say necessarily too much because I don't want to, if you are curious on that at all, um, I would go, uh, I would definitely check this out because it's a, uh, um, it's a very interesting, uh, set, but and then after that I watched on Blu-ray, um, this was the last thing that I watched last month and then I'll, I should probably hurry this up. <laughs> um, then I, uh, I watched, um, the film, this is from 1927 slash 1928, um, this one best picture or what was best picture back then. Um, cause the first year of the Academy Awards, there was like two different, it was like outstanding picture and like best picture or something like something along those lines. Like, uh, so s this one along with the movie sunrise, uh, one, uh, but this one is the movie wings. Um, and this is a very impressive movie. Um, I was, I mean, this is 1927. 
Um, so almost a hundred years old, but it is just, it was shocking at how much they were able to achieve with, you know, I mean, there are shots of, uh, you know, people flying. I mean, it's all has to do with airplanes, obviously, but, um, you know, shots of people flying these airplanes and there was like, you know, reverse shots of them, or like either the back of their head or the front of them. And, um, and it's all practical because there's like, you know, the ground, you can see it very clearly. And so, um, you know, the thought of them going up in an airplane, filming this stuff, coming down, reversing the camera, going up, like, it, it's just very impressive. Um, and uh, honestly, there's some sequences in here that I was like, that's honestly for 1927, it's kind of like, you know, risque for 1927. Um, but I don't know, it was it was fun. I would, uh, if you are a fan of older films, I'd highly recommend checking this out. Um, it is it's uh, silent because it's you know 1927. It's color tinted, 144 minutes. So it does kind of you know it is a little bit longer, but um, yeah, I would. Um, it was a fun one. But and then I watched. Um, so this was the first of this month. Um, my wife and I sat down and watched this, um, and it mainly in honor of. Um, the the new theme park in epic universe which is a part of the universal orlando resort um and uh the in the epic universe there is a how to train your dragon uh section and so she's never seen how to train your dragon but um so we sat down and watched how to train your dragon i watched this in theaters when it first came out um honestly i think this is an underrated like film this is fantastic i love this movie um i uh i don't know i, I forgot how much i enjoyed this um and it's just it's so good um and it just the the music in this especially i feel like is too good for what it is it feels like i don't i don't know how to describe it there's a whole sequence uh where he's first learning to fly on a dragon um and you know he built something to help this dragon out and um it just it's so good uh so if you're a fan of honestly even if you're not a fan of animation i would just still recommend checking it out because it's just a solid uh story but uh, my physical media collection is based on rewatchability don't care much about uh, the format but try out but try out to get uh best as affordable around a thousand titles now that's awesome um I feel like that's a good, like, a good way to have a physical media collection of, um, you know, just, uh, um, just to base it off of rewatchability. Because, I mean, in my collection, there's a lot of films that I've not never even seen, um, and sometimes I will pop them in, and I feel like I wasted money. Um, so, but I mean if you collect basically only stuff that you've know you've seen that you know you'll enjoy again uh you know that's a solid way to uh to build up a collection uh i know you said you are not a super fan of documentaries but which are your favorite docs or, or on music slash or music uh history or politics Ooh, um hmm I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I'm trying to think. I really like nature documentaries. <laughs> um, so like the Planet Earth series, uh, I really enjoy that. Um, and I just feel like it's just, I don't, it's so fun to see just like all these creatures and stuff. And it's very impressive uh, how they filmed it. Uh, so that's probably my favorite documentary series. Um, but I'm trying to think of other types of documentaries I've watched. Um, I mean, like, uh, I don't know if this counts as a documentary, uh, but Tokyo Olympiad um, is kind of, I guess it's kind of a documentary um, in a way. I mean, it's all like, you know, uh, like footage of the actual, like, you know, 1964 um, Summer Olympics. So, I mean, this was really good. I really enjoyed this. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think of other uh, other documentaries that I've watched that uh, have stood out to me. Um, 
I'm sure as soon as I end this, I'm going to think of like four, but um, yeah, I'd say off the top of my head, uh, Planet Earth is my is my go to. Um, I mean, the uh, what was the other one? I mean, there's other Criterion documentaries uh, like the Monterey Pop Festival. Uh, Give Me Shelter is another one um, that are like interesting. Uh, but I'm also not like a huge music person, so like music documentaries aren't necessarily like my go-to either. Um, uh, I think Criterion is probably the best label for blind buys because you know uh, the that the movie is going to be quality. Agreed. I um, I that's why I never feel bad. Um, like my comment earlier, I. I that kind of excludes a uh, criterion. Um, I don't think I've ever felt bad for purchasing a criterion title. Um, you know, even if it's something that doesn't necessarily like spark my interest, um, like the complete Monterey pop festival, for instance, uh, where I, I just said, I'm like not a huge documentary music person. Um, but I can appreciate for what it is saying as a film. Um, and so I always like, I don't feel bad about purchasing Criterion. I feel like it's, they're always like something to get from the, uh, from the film. And so, um, yeah, I, I really enjoy how the whole Criterion collection, um, uh, let's see, a great slash, uh, his hilarious documentary suggestion is American movie, American movie. That sounds kind of familiar. I don't think I have that one, but I will, uh, American movie. Yes. I will, um, keep an eye out, um, for that as well. Um, but after how I trained your dragon, I watched the last film of the Antoine Duenel series and that was, uh, love on the run. And so, um, this kind of ties up the whole, uh, at least this collection of films very nicely. Um, and I mean, stuff like, I feel like in order to get the most out of this, you kind of have to watch, um, you know, watch all the previous three movies plus the short film. Uh, and then this one, which it will, you know, definitely watch all these movies in order because it's a telling a story that is, you know, each movie has to do with each other. So, um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed uh, this whole series. I honestly cannot recommend it enough. Oh, almost just dropped the whole thing. Um, so if you, uh, this is unfortunately out of print, uh, as a box set. And so, um, but if you do come across this highly, highly, highly recommend checking it out, especially if you are a fan of the Criterion collection, um, this would be an amazing Blu-ray set if this ever came out again. Um, so I need to uh, check out to see what else this director made, because I feel like I really like his style of, uh, filmmaking. Um, let's see. Last week I watched An Officer and a Gentleman for the first time in honor of the late Louis uh, Gossett Jr. I, so I have actually not seen An Officer and a Gentleman. Um, do I have it is the question, though. Um, I don't know if I own it, um, but I'll have to uh, check that out. Um, and then I watched, this is on the third of the month. So I need to start powering through these. <laughs> um, I watched the film Flight of the Phoenix um, with Jimmy Stewart or James Stewart. Um, fantastic movie, honestly. They, I know there was a remake of this that was I watched many, many years ago. Uh, but this was my first time watching the original one. And this is a fantastic movie. Uh, it's 142 minutes long, so it is a little longer. But um it's just, it's so well done. Um, and it's, it feels very isolating. Uh, I mean, it, it pretty much starts off in the airplane going over the desert and it does not like, you don't leave that area, um, for a very, very, very long time. And so, um, yeah, it, it feels just like, um, I don't know, just, it, it feels like you're, I mean, you're also desperate for these people to get out of the situation, um, as much as they are. And so, um, this edition is actually really cool too, because it comes with a little, uh, paper airplane that you can, uh, put together, <laughs> um, if you want, which I will not be doing because I like to have it complete, but, um, yeah, fantastic film. Um, just, 
I mean, it's a 1965. So, I mean, it, it uh, has that like nice 60s feeling to it as well. Um, and then I watched, um, this is a Severin title. I bought this a, um, a few weeks ago. Um, and I watched the film, The Black Cat, um, which was pretty good. I, I enjoyed it. I feel like it was uh, pretty creative. It feels like a Severin title, if that makes sense. Uh, Severin Films is just a, um, it's an interesting label. Uh, and I was actually prepping because this last weekend, uh, was it this last weekend? Um, I went to a horror convention. I don't know if you follow me on, uh, Instagram, you would have saw my, my story of me, I guess there, I didn't really post all that much when I was there, but uh, I went to my first horror convention. Um, it was a cinema wasteland in Strongsville, Ohio. So um, I went on Saturday and it was a fun time. I feel like it was uh, it was interesting. There was a lot of different vendors there. So a lot of people selling, um, you know, a lot of different types of movies, a lot of horror. Um, and uh, Severin Films was there um, along with Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, Synapse was there, Troma. Uh, Lloyd Kaufman was there, um, who is the, uh, the, the like, uh, the guy who made trauma films. Um, and there was a couple other, uh, like famous people there too, as well. But, um, yeah, uh, black cat, great time. Um, it's definitely, it felt like a separate title, if that makes sense. But, um, yeah. And then let's see what else I know. Watch. So I need a drink of water. Um, did you participate in the indicator and Kino Lober spring sales? I did not, unfortunately. Um, I pretty much used up my, my whole budget on the laser discs, um, which was, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I wasn't able to, uh, to participate in the Kino Lober or indicator sale, or even like, um, the, uh, cinema wasteland, uh, convention I went to. Um, there was some really great deals there, um, but I was just not able to, uh, to, to, to participate mainly for, from, you know, purchasing, uh, like 300 laser discs. Um, so, uh, I know there were some great deals. I, I looked through some of the stuff, but, um, and there's definitely some, uh, Kino Lober stuff that I would love to grab, but, um, next sale, I will, uh, I will grab them next sale, I suppose. Um, but speaking of Severin. I started diving into the House of Psycho uh, pa- Psycho so, Psychotic oh my goodness House of Psychotic Women uh, box set with the film uh, Indent. Yep, <laughs> words are hard. Um, let's see. Uh, the laser disc purchase was fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I. Thank goodness, I can't talk. Um, I watched the movie Indi- or uh, uh, yeah, Identicate. Sorry, my brain just stopped there for a second. Um, let's see, that was a great laser disc call, though. Uh, some amazing titles. Yeah, that's what I kind of um, I kind of figured like I would rather purchase something like that where um, I I wouldn't necessarily be coming across those titles anytime soon uh i figured with like when it comes to dvd or blu-ray or stuff like a lot of that stuff is yes it 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 technically can go out of print but i feel like it is easier to come across um buying up someone's whole laserdisc collection like that especially the amount of like criterion that was in there and uh you know some of the foreign stuff and the silent error stuff like it would be a while before I came across it, especially that it all worked out to be like a dollar seventy a piece or so. Um, I feel like it was for that price. Um, I couldn't pass that up, uh, and so the like I figured you know the Kino sale that's going to come around again, uh, Indicator sale, which I honestly I need to get in more into uh, Indicator as a label. Um, you know that will eventually come around again, and so. Um, yeah, I um someday I will uh will be able to uh, purchase more of those. But um, as far as Identicate goes, um, this was a very interesting film. Uh, it's, I believe it was Italian. Maybe it was shot in Italy. Um, and I just feel like it's just 
I don't know. It's a bizarre film. It feels again, like a Severin title, which makes sense. Um, but that's what I love about Severin is just, they put some wild stuff out there and it doesn't feel like, um, I don't know. It, it, it doesn't feel um, like a, it, it, the company feels very like interesting where they just keep putting out interesting things. And so uh, they, it's similar to Criterion, how it exposes you to a lot of different types of films. Uh, it's like Severin does that, but in like a different way, uh, if that makes sense. Um, and so that's why I enjoy Severin. And it was fun to like look at their, uh, their booth at um the the horror convention and uh, to see what they had uh which i will say that they um they their the pricing at the convention was slightly cheaper than how it would be like you know online just say uh like uh for instance there was like a box set that usually online is like 195 at the convention it was like 175 um so there was like a markdown on things which was i found interesting uh, but unfortunately, I just was not able to, um, you know, to, uh, what's it called? I was not able to purchase anything when I was there, which is okay. Um, but it was kind of interesting, too, to sit in on some of the panels and just kind of, uh, you know, when people were talking about films that they made and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, let's see. Excuse the stupid question, but are Laserdiscs 4x3 pan and scan? I hmm. I actually don't know. That's a great question. Um, I have no idea uh, if somebody else has a you know an answer for that. I'm also curious. Um, I mean, obviously they were being developed when uh, you know tube TVs were the market, and so in a way it has that same like VHS feeling. Um, but I don't know, because I know, I think, I want to say I have some widescreen laser discs. Um, so I don't know. I don't know for sure. So I cannot answer that. I'm sorry about that. Um, but then, let's see, I have four more movies. I promise I'm finishing this up as quickly as I can. Um, I watched the film uh, Return to Horror High, um, which was a great just 80s like film. Um, and I... Uh, I liked it. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, I would like to rewatch it. I feel like I was partially like distracted uh, when I watched this. I feel like I was like thinking of like other things that I needed to get done. Uh, so I'd like to rewatch this. I would also like to watch Horror High, um, which it's a, um, you know, I, I forget when that film came out, but uh, this is, I'm assuming, I mean, I think it's just a sequel to it. Um, so I like to actually sit down and watch that as well. Uh, cause I know, uh, vinegar syndrome puts that or has a, uh, Blu-ray of that out, but, um, let's see. Did you see that ice spice got cast ice spice got cast in the high and low remake. LOL. I did not No, That's interesting. I honestly do not know who ice spice is. Um, yeah, <laughs> But let's see. And then on the, um, yeah, so uh, also where I live, um, I don't know if, if anybody else like knows about the whole like eclipse thing. Um, so I, I pretty much took like the whole day and just like watched that happen outside, which was really cool and a lot of fun. Um, and is like, I wish like uh, I had some like better like, photos of it i didn't really like bother taking photos because i figured you know so many people out there would be taking photos of it but um that happened um and then i watched this movie i guess um so three more movies guys i'm so sorry um but i just i figured i'd mention the eclipse because it happened like i was pretty much within the path of like the whole um the uh like what was it called the, t the totality of it um so it pretty much it got like weirdly like dark around me um so me and my wife were just sitting outside for the whole day um but let's see won't happen for 40 years yes i um so i have like uh i have some like telescope stuff that i um still learning how to use and so i kind of wish i had it like more prepped in time to 
uh, you know, take some better photos, but, uh, you know, 40 years from now, I'll get it. Um, but then I watched the film, uh, Aikiro, Aikiru, 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 I think that's how you say it. I am sorry if I'm butchering that, um, this film, but, um, it's from 1952. It's black and white. It's in Japanese, 143 minutes long. Um, this translates to, um, to life, I believe. Um, this is a fantastic movie. If you have not gotten a chance to watch this, I would highly recommend checking it out. Uh, it just, it feels like, um, I mean, on the back of the, uh, the criterion here, it talks about how it's Akira Kurosawa is like one of his like greatest achievements, which I would 100% agree with. Um, it feels like somebody kind of reflecting on, uh, I'm not sure when he made this within his career, but it feels like someone kind of reflecting on their life and just, um, you know, the thought of, uh, like, you know, maybe passing away soon and kind of just having the, the thought of like, what did you accomplish with life or what did you, um, you know, do? And so I would, uh, highly recommend checking this out. Um, if you are a fan of the Akira Kurosawa, um, it was, I don't know, it, it, yes, it is 143 minutes. So it does kind of feel, um, it, it is longer, but honestly, when I watched it, like 45 minutes went by and I did not even realize it. And then another 45 minutes went by. Um, and it was just, it, it flew by because it's just so well done. Um, and I mean, it really puts you in the shoes of this character. Uh, and so, yeah, I would, this would be a great 4k upgrade at some point from Criterion, uh, if they ever put that out, but um i would love to uh to watch it again um i must i almost thought let's see i almost thought you watched black cat white cat 1998 uh former uh I, uh yep don't know how that <laughs> uh let's see my favorite summer film is it's on criterion or let's see is it on criterion we don't have criterion in stores here um in uh mainland europe unfortunately let's see black I mean, are you talking about black black cat white cat or are you talking about the black cat i'm sorry ralph i uh i don't understand um because the black cat that i watched uh this is not from criterion uh, this is a Severin uh, Films title, but um, Black Cat, White Cat. Okay, um, I have not seen Black Cat, White Cat, um, and I I don't think it's on Criterion. So, um, but I'll have to uh, check that out. Uh, so, uh, Kira is one of my uh, favorite Kurosawa films. Beautiful film. I agree. It was a um, it might be my favorite Kurosawa film now. Um, I feel like every single one, like I was putting it off for a while because I was intimidated by the runtime. Um, and it's similar in the sense of seven samurai where it has a long runtime, but like, it's so good that you don't really, it doesn't really matter. Um, I feel like it's, it's just one of those films that you just, you fall into the world and you just kind of get sucked up in it. But um and then let's see. let's see so this was yeah technically yesterday i watched the film uh diary of a country priest um which is an out of print criterion uh, i should say this was spy number 221 and this is a let's see, 222 um which this was also really good um i feel like i need to go back and rewatch this too um because i like half watched it um one night and then um finished it up yesterday and so i feel like i need to like actually just sit down and watch the whole thing straight through but uh, overall i enjoyed it i feel like it was very well done um and it also it kind of like it you feel for the character too just kind of going through some stuff and um yeah this would i feel like this would also this would be great if it was put back into the collection because i feel like this dvd is actually kind of a harder to find um or now it's out of print and it's expensive but uh and then finally the last movie that i watched uh now that it's been 50 minutes on a live stream going over just movies that i've watched um this i watched this last night for the first time um 
and I absolutely loved this movie. Uh, I know Criterion has this on Blu-ray and 4K. I would um, love to actually get it. Um, and I would love to get it on 4K because I'd love to rewatch it on 4K. But I watched the films by Sofia Coppola, and that is The Virgin Suicides. Um, what a beautiful film. This is so well done, and uh, it's a heartbreaking film. But um, I, um, I just absolutely, like, loved it. It was so the lighting and the cinematography and that's just like the feeling of the movie um was so just fantastic um and if you have not seen uh this film i would highly recommend going to check it out um because it is just um yeah it's just a great movie um but that is everything that i watched Sorry, that took forever. Um, that's everything I watched from basically the last live stream to now. Um, so hopefully, if I do a live stream on Sunday, hopefully this part of the video will be way shorter because I'll only be talking about what I watched tonight up to uh, Sunday. Um, and uh, it's like, oh, great. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Brenton film, Diary of a Country Priest. Need to... Uh, need that for my uh, Brinson collection. Yes, um, I I wouldn't mind re like I wouldn't mind watching what else uh, he has uh, directed. But um, so yeah, what are some things that you guys are watching? Um, or just comments, concerns, questions, things that you know um, people want to say. Um. Let's see, I own the soundtrack of Virgin by Air on vinyl. A uh, great film as well. Yes, I feel like the soundtrack too to this was fantastic. Um, try not to say the title too many times because I'm not sure how YouTube reacts to that. Um, so, I mean, the soundtrack to this movie is was was a uh, fantastic as well. Um, and I just feel like it is a. Uh, it's so just like. It has like this, like uh, this this feeling of it, um, and um, I don't know. I I I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it reminds me. I mean, it's, it makes sense because it's the same director. But uh, Lost in Translation uh, has a similar feeling where it just kind of like puts you like in a dream state almost. It feels like you're just kind of like, you know, dreaming while you're watching it. Um, and. I don't know. I, I uh, Sofia Coppola is um, she's made like I feel like I've seen maybe one other thing that she's directed. Um, I mean, Lost in Translation and this movie, and uh, I don't know if I've seen. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I've seen of hers. Um, but I feel like she's very her style is very interesting, um, and so I need to watch both more of her and uh, you know her dad of. Francis Ford Coppola. Um, I feel like just they're they're very both of them are extremely talented uh, when it comes to uh, filmmaking. But uh, Pit Pocket is probably uh, the best in Brinson film. So that's actually a film Pit Pocket. I've not. Yeah, so I do not. I've not actually seen Pit Pocket, um, and um, I. I don't own it either. So it's one that I need to uh, to get around to buying one of these Criterion sales. But um, yeah, I, I would like to uh, check out more of what else he has done um, along with the same director as the uh, the Adventures of Antoine Duenel uh, movies. But, but what are some things that you guys are watching? Uh, or what are some things that uh, just, I don't know, questions, concerns? uh comments i guess i don't know <laughs> uh i'm really looking forward to seeing francis ford coppola's is it coppola or coppola a cop coppola i i oh i always say coppola but i've heard people say coppola francis ford coppola i don't know um, I was going to stick with Coppola, uh, Metrop or Megatrop, Megalopolis, Megalopolis, yep, <laughs> in theater soon. 
Um, yes, I've heard about that uh, film, but I don't know really anything about it. And so um, I'll try and make it out to a theater to uh, check that out. Um, I mean, he's a very interesting director. I feel like there's, I mean, he made some just like random movies too within his career, but like then he's did like, you know, The Godfather or Apocalypse Now or um, uh, The Conversation or um, I'm trying to think what else, The Outsiders or I don't know. He's done like a lot of interesting uh, films, but then he did movies like Jack with Robin Williams um, or I'm trying to think of the other random ones that he did. Uh, so he's been, I've gone back and forth in my mind if I should add him to my, like, director section of, like, some of my, you know, the section that I collect all the director's works of. Um, same thing with Sophia uh, Coppola. I feel like um, I've gone back and forth between adding her as well. Um, but I try to, like, these, the directors that I add to that, like, the section, I try to you know, think of people that, um, like, are, like, have a very specific style, or, um, I don't know, it's just, it's interesting films that they've put out, uh, and so I try to stick with those, but uh, I feel like Francis Ford Coppola is, like, arguably one of the more important directors out there who's made some of the greatest films out there, like the Godfather series, like, films, or, uh, what's it called? uh apocalypse now even and so um i don't know maybe i will uh <laughs> i will add them to my uh collection but yeah let's see uh what is your most ex uh, uh exclusive francis for coppola box set oh let's see ah uh you own hmm so i don't really have any box sets the closest thing i have is like a godfather box set um which i have to have on dvd blu-ray laserdisc uh, i'm pretty sure i have the movies on ced as well um but yeah i don't i don't think i have any other box sets of his um uh, how many directors would you say you have in your director's collection i personally collect by director mostly um Right now, I would say maybe 10 to 15 uh, directors, uh, maybe a little bit more. I'm not, I'd have to go and check. Uh, sometime in the future, I would like to do a video going over each of the directors that I have in my collection and what movies I have of theirs. Um, I've been trying to watch more films like um, that are like that fall into those uh, directors like because I've, I've um, I love collecting by director I think it's like such a, a fascinating way to collect um, because that's also opened my mind up to a lot of other different types of films by the same director um, so like uh, for for instance um, the the director of uh, Alejandro Jodorowsky um, his most famous film I'd say is either El Topo or The Holy Mountain uh and you know a lot of people have heard of those but like um i i mean i i really like I think those are definitely some of my favorites of his but like also there's some of his other movies that he's done later on in his career um like endless poetry or uh what's the other one that he did um i'm drawing a blank now um but i i feel like it's like by collecting the director's full filmography it just kind of you get to see uh, you know, where they started from and then like what they've developed into as a creator. And so it just, it's a very interesting way to like collect a director. Um, one, a director that I'd like to maybe add soon is Tarkovsky. Um, I own most of his movies in the Criterion Collection. However, there's like a couple that I do not own that, um, I would like to actually get my hands on like uh, the movie, the sacrifice. Um, I would love to get uh, nostalgia is another one um, that I'd like to get as, and um, I'm trying to think of the other ones. Um, but yeah, I, I would just like to, to basically just watch more of certain directors because I feel like it's just, you know, seeing how they developed their craft over the years. It's very fascinating to me. So um, someday I'll do a whole video going over, uh, each director and the different editions and, uh, 
um, I don't know, the, the different films within that. So um, stay tuned for that, I suppose. Um, uh, watched Imaginary. It was a decent horror film uh, with a scary teddy bear. Uh, critics slashed it. Or, uh, so, uh, have you seen it? Um, so I have not seen Imaginary. Um, and I want to, it feels like I might just wait till it comes out on physical media. Uh, I feel like it's going to be one of those movies that I'll check out at the library. Uh, so I don't necessarily have to purchase, but, um, it's something I would like to eventually check out. Um, but yeah, it looked interesting. Uh, but I feel like the, the thing with like, it, it's so unfortunate because I don't necessarily like going to a theater to watch a horror film. Um, because I've encountered this now a handful of times, specifically with horror films, where, you know, people in horror films just are, they will be so loud, or they will laugh at things that aren't supposed to be funny, um, or they will, you know, like the one example that I always go back to is just when I went to go see uh, The Conjuring 2 in theaters, uh, there's like a group of teenagers that you know, they kept getting up out of their chairs and just walking because it was uh, the aisle was like in the middle of the theater. Um, kept walking up and down the aisle, and like they then they would go and it was just such a um, uh, it was such a a disappointing experience because eventually they uh, one of the managers had to come in and stand by the door and uh, you know he went back to the teenagers and talked to them and it was just. Uh, and, you know, there was another time when I went to go see Saw 10, where people were laughing through the entire movie. And it just kind of ruined the experience because it's, you know, supposed to not be funny. And I feel like some people, when they, um, when, you know, to deal with or to prove that they are like tough or whatever, they will like laugh through a horror film. Uh, don't get me wrong. There's definitely a time and place to like laugh at a horror film. I just feel like when you're in the theater, it's just like, just watch the movie and if you want to laugh at it you know get it and watch it at home because i was there to like you know trying to just enjoy the film but um yeah that's my <laughs> so yeah that going back to the imaginary thing um i didn't go to the theaters to see it um but i would like to eventually watch it um so sorry about my my theater rant there um let's see jd hi kyle hello uh, I organize my collection mostly by director, uh, but then I have like separate sections of my top 10 favorite directors, uh, Tarkovsky, Fellini, Lynch, etc. Okay, that's awesome. That's a, uh, um, I feel like my collection slowly becoming that because every now and then I will like add a new director and then I have to like pull out all of their films and add them to the director section. Um, the only time I don't pull out films that go to the director section is with Criterion because I feel like having all the Criterion films together, in my opinion, just makes more sense. Um, and so usually what I will do, um, is, you know, just say if this was my, uh, my, here's a better example. If these were like three films by a director and one of them was for like, you know, just say this was available on Criterion. I turn, I put a blank DVD case in there, turn it around so it's like this way. So, um, I don't know. And that way, it, that tells me it's on Criterion. Go look there. Um, and someday down the line, if I come across it cheap enough on Criterion or another format, I'll buy it and add it to the uh, collection. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like my collection slowly turning into a. Uh, you know, just different directors um, and just their different work. But um, yeah, let's see. Tarkovsky Stalker was too boring for my taste. Yeah, it's definitely not a film for everyone. Um, it is, let's see, where do I have it? Um, um, it is 161 minutes long. Um, and it is, I mean, 1979. It's in Russian with, uh, you know, subtitles. Um, it is a, it's kind of like, I always, I feel like I describe people of like Tarkovsky to people of like, um, he's like a Russian Stanley Kubrick where he, uh, it's like if Stanley Kubrick just made Barry Lyndon, but like different types of Barry Lyndon, like if that makes sense, um, 
where it's like these long uh, sequences or um, not much ha happens on the screen. Uh, so he's definitely an, a, an interesting director. He's not for everyone. I feel like he's a, uh, um, he, he has a style to him that, uh, you know, it's not necessarily for everyone's taste, but, uh, I mean, personally, I just, I enjoy it. I, I see, I also have to be in the right mood to watch his films. Uh, there's actually one Tarkovsky film that I own that I have not seen mainly because I just feel like I haven't been in the mood to actually watch it. Um, so maybe someday I'll get around to uh, to checking it out, but it does kind of feel like a like a little bit of a um, you know a challenge to watch a Tarkovsky film. It's definitely one you you have to like sit down and actually pay attention to because um, otherwise I feel like you're going to be missing out on on the uh, the film. But um, I watched the 4K version of Jurassic World. Honestly, couldn't tell the difference between the 4k and blu-ray version yeah that is unfortunately a um a thing that happens with some 4k uh where the newer films um are just they don't look like they're like they already like on blu-ray or even sometimes dvd it looks like it was shot and it's like well this looks good like i you know I don't know if I can really tell a difference. It, I mean, a lot of factors do play into, like, um, if you have Dolby Vision on your TV. Uh, it, like, I've I've heard that basically the smallest screen um, for 4K that you can really, really even notice a difference is 55 inch. Um, the bigger screen you go, that's when you start noticing the the difference. Um, unfortunately, I just have a 55 inch 4K TV, so. Uh, I would love to get like a nice, you know, 75, 80 inch 4K TV to really, you know, enhance my viewing experience. But um, yeah, I, um, there's, there's been a few 4Ks that I watched uh, that I was like, well, that, that it doesn't feel like a, um, I don't know. I feel like when I watch, like when I want to like uh, think of like a 4K, I think of like 2001 A Space Odyssey, where it is like night and day of like difference between the blu-ray and the 4k uh it just looks superior um in every way on 4k so um yeah it's it's definitely a a thing where the newer movies especially i feel like um it is a uh, it's a thing but uh andre rublev is a is a great tarkovsky film that's less cinematic poetry um but a masterpiece yes i i have it Unfortunately, I only have the uh, the DVD um, of Andre Rub Rublev. I think that's how you say it. Rub Rublev. Yeah. Um, I know there's a nice Blu-ray of this, which I would like to get at some point. Um, but I mean, this is definitely it's a 205-minute black and white Russian film, uh, which might sound intimidating to people. Um, and it's just it's fantastic. Uh, I cannot recommend. I mean, I really like Tarkovsky. I feel like his his types of films are like I would like to go back and rewatch Sol uh, Solaris um, because when I watched it, I feel like I wasn't giving it the attention that it really needed. Um, but I really liked The Mirror. Um, I'm trying to think of the other ones that I've seen of his. Um, the one that I haven't seen of uh, Tarkovsky that I need to uh, get around to is uh, Ivan's Childhood. Um, but I mean, this one's only 95 minutes, uh, it's in, I mean, it's black and white and Russian, but, uh, so someday I'll get around to, uh, to checking this out. But, um, I think I said this in a, a live stream a couple of weeks ago, but I would love if there was like a nice, like Tarkovsky box set that Criterion put out that had, you know, um, all of his films on a 4k or Blu-ray even, I feel like that would just be really cool, uh, to have, um, but recently, Kino Lober put out uh, the movie Nostalgia on 4K um, by Tarkovsky, and I would love to grab a copy of it, um, which I don't know if it was on sale or not during the uh, the spring sale. But um, yeah, some at some point, it would be nice to uh, to grab a, a copy of Nostalgia. But Let's see. I'll probably be wrapping this up um, semi-soon-ish. 
been talking for about 70 ish minutes which is wild um but uh, unfortunately nostalgia 4k is not on sale okay um that's unfortunate um i i would love i need to, i would like to get it um maybe sometime in the near future but it just always seems like there is always something to buy when it comes to collecting because uh, it just seems like every week there's just more stuff coming out um and you know there's only so much money you can spend on movies without going completely broke so um good evening kyle and others are and online family via uh nyc uh question do you own one of the horror classics cemetery man i let's see i do not but i know what movie you're talking about um i believe severin films put out cemetery man if i'm not mistaken um i think it was a semi-recent edition i think um but yeah i do not own uh the uh, the classic cemetery man um which is unfortunate but um let's see oh well you must view asap yes i um i would like to um uh, but i'll add it to my to my list but um, i'm wrapping up to good night everyone uh, good night, Ralph. Thank you for uh, joining the live stream. I do appreciate it. Um, I always see you uh, pop up in the comments, so I do appreciate your constant support on the uh, the channel. So I hope you have a fantastic uh, week, Ralph. Uh, let's see. Monkey Man is an amazing film. Uh, Del Del uh, Patel is perfect as uh, Asian John Wick. Asian John Wick, huh? Okay, I'll have to check out uh, Monkey Man as well. That seems interesting. Um, but yeah, I'll um, let's see. If there's nothing else people have questions on, I will probably stop here. Question mark. Um, I am excited uh, for my um, for a video coming out probably tomorrow. Um, and I know some people have asked questions on the topic that the video will be on before. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Um, that will be probably being posted tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, just depending on if I, after this, go edit it, um, which I, I'll probably just go do, I guess. But um, yeah, um, I guess I'll wrap up here then. So. Uh, thank you to everybody that participated in these live streams. I really do appreciate it. It's always fun uh, chatting with you guys. Sorry that this one was randomly on a Wednesday. Uh, I know usually they are on Sunday evenings. Um, so, uh, you know, hopefully, I'm, <laughs> hopefully I'm, I'm able to plan things out better. So keep an eye out on my, um, on my Instagram story. Um, for a, a, a uh, what's it called schedule on things that when I post, uh, I usually post on there like 24 hours ish in advance uh, for um, for live streams. And so uh, I guess keep an eye out for that. I'll probably have one going on this Sunday as well. So um, I will uh, I'll always or I'll uh, I'll be there um, on uh, Sunday and I'll probably have a video out tomorrow. So uh, recently things have just been pushed back just because this month has been absolutely insane and you know it's just one thing after another but uh gonna make it through so um yeah if that's if that's everything um let's see as always uh thanks kyle and good evening uh via nyc um let's see we're true grade um so i um um but um I'm trying to think if there's anything else I needed to mention. Um, if you are watching this back on a um, on the like replay, uh, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Um, I'm always curious. Like, please leave comments down below of things that were said, of, like questions that were asked or whatever, um, or any of the movies I watched um, or talked about. Leave your thoughts down below. Um, I am I'm always curious on that. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so so much for watching. 
And I hope everybody has a, a great um, week. Um, as along with that, I will also mention that I, I do have a letterbox. Um, if you are curious, I am constantly adding films that I've seen to that. Um, and I'm still trying to like finish, um, kind of like finish it up where I'm just adding everything that I've seen to it. And then I'll get into the rhythm of when I watch something, I'll add it like the day that I watched it. Um, so uh, if you are curious, that will be eventually linked in the description of this video or it's in linked in the description of any of the other videos. Um, and yeah, so thank you guys again. And I hope uh, everybody has a fantastic evening and I hope everybody has a great rest of their week. Um, and I will see you guys all on Sunday. So um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching.